Okay, so this is recording. All right, so I've asked you to set up everything. These are the techniques that you're going to use. Now, if you have a piece of paper, take a moment to write them down. So grab a pencil. Pencils are probably the best thing to work with. Um, you're going to write down wash, dry brushing, stippling, flicking, wet on wet, gradient, wet on dry, and there's another one, it's called masking, but you might not be able to use that one. Okay, so to start the masking one, I actually have to wait. So this is called rubber cement glue. It's uh, very, very sticky, and I love it. I'm just gonna put this down because I need it to dry. So I'm putting some rubber cement glue on there and I'm gonna wait for it to dry. Now, while you're writing those down, Again, I'm gonna show you what I'm using. So like we were saying before, this is one of the um, the containers that has the dried almost pucks of paint. Now this one is actually, it's a Sakura Koi brand. I love this thing. Uh, it works really well. So this is the stuff where it just, you know, you can have the little pucks of paint and they still work well. And actually like the ones when I've used it all up, I've been filling them up with liquid paint. So it's not like you're just limited to this. Well, some of the pucks have fallen out or disappeared. And when that happens, I just take my liquid paint and I put it into that little spot. Watercolor is great because no matter what happens, it just dries. So even if you're not ready yet, I'm going to start the tutorial. You can follow along with me if you want, but the reason we're recording this is so that you can always do it alongside me. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is a wash. I have my handy palette here, and we did a lot of these yesterday. I have some from yesterday, so I'm just going to take some water, put it on my palette, Okay, and then I take a little bit of paint, I'm gonna use this one, and mix it in with the water. Now, for most washes, you can adjust how dark they are by putting more paint in, or how light they are by adding more water. But washes are pretty much the most standard technique we're gonna use. So wash is very simply right across. Okay, it should be a very light color. So take a minute to do that. Mix your water, color, your water and your paint, more water than paint, and then you can put that down. Now, the next one is dry brushing. With all watercolor, you're gonna need your brush to be a little bit wet to activate the paint. So what I've done is I've dipped my brush in water, and then this is my brush with water. I'm gonna use my fingers and squeeze the water out. Okay, so it should be damp. You can check by touching it against your skin. Uh, but it should not be soaking wet. At that point, I put it in the paint. So because it's just damp, when it goes down, it's gonna look kind of rough. It's gonna pick up the fibers of the paper and the color is going to be stronger. Okay, so dry brushing, again, clean your paintbrush, squeeze it out so that the bristles are just damp, mix it in with your paint, and then just lay it down. Okay, your brush is not supposed to be that wet. To do it again, you just repeat the process. Okay, so the next one is pretty easy. It's called stippling. In order to do this, I prefer to do it with a circular brush or a small brush. Sorry, I just have to get my small brush because it fell on the floor. All right, so this is the small brush I'm using. As always, dip it in water every single time. You can't do watercolor without water. Okay, then I'm going to choose a pigment. I'm gonna use purple, because I never use purple. Or I think this is more of a dark blue. Okay, and then stippling is just dots. The cool thing with stippling is you can always put another color on top of it. 
So I'm going to mix a yellow because remember we learned yesterday those are complementary colors so they'll stand out. And then I'm going to dot the yellow on top of it. Okay, so stippling is just essentially making dots. Same thing as when we're drawing. All right, so this is the one I probably dislike the most, but it is a valid technique. So it's called flicking. I'm going to take a bigger brush for this. I'm going to dip it in water. Um, I'm not going to wipe the water off. I want my brush pretty wet. And then I'm just going to dip it in whatever color I want. So hmm, let's do this red. Okay, I have a lot of pigment on my brush. I want to make sure I have a good amount. Now, here's where it gets a little tricky. You can do this with a toothbrush too, but you can do it with a paintbrush. Your finger's gonna get dirty. So you wanna take the bristles and just pull them back and then let go. Okay, and you keep doing that until there is no pigment left in the brush. The brush is gonna look really ragged. After you've done that, please immediately wash your brush and reform it. So once it's in the water, you look at the brush again and then you just squeeze it so that the bristles lay flat. Okay, you don't want to leave it all ratty. You have to take good care of your brushes. Um, if you don't, they degrade really quickly. If you do, uh, the dollar store brushes I'm using right now can last you for years. So that's flicking. The next technique is called wet on wet. So you take your brush again. This time you just dip it in water. While your brush is wet, you paint onto the paper. So obviously you're not seeing this because water is clear, but what I'm doing is just wetting down the paper with water. Now take the same brush, dip it in the paint that you're using. So I'm just going to use a wash that I did yesterday. It works best with washes. And then I'm just going to paint over top. The water in the paper will give it a different look, almost a softer look. Now the thing you do have to worry about with wet on wet is bleeding. So that means sometimes, see if I can do it. If I take, and it has a lot of pigment in it, it does that. Okay, and it's harder to control. Okay, so if you look, you see how this is like expanding outwards? Sometimes you want that in your image, like if you're doing trees or grass, sometimes that looks really cool. Uh, but if you're trying to do like a portrait, you do not want that to happen. It's so uncontrolled and it really can like mess you up. You'll spend hours trying to fix that one mistake. So just so you're aware of that. All right, so gradient. This is actually pretty easy. So I'm just gonna wet my brush down, wipe at the edge. Remember every one of these starts with a wet brush. Um, I'm gonna take this because I was using it before. I'm gonna load it up with pigment. You can do this over here too. Right, I can just load this up with pigment. Then, just like when we're doing it with a pencil, you start at the top and you work your way down. Okay, so that's about one tone. Now you do it again. Okay, load this up. And just like when we were shading the sphere, you start at the top, but this time you don't go down as far. Okay, and then the final time, again, lots of pigment, start at the top, and then don't go down as far at all. So this is too wet, I'm going to have to wait for it to dry to do the rest of it. And it's also best if you use straight up pigment, no washing that time. Okay, once that's done, and somewhat dry, so I'm kind of cheating here. You take a smaller brush, dip it in water, don't put it in any pigment, and then you just go on the edges and you blend it, okay? So the idea is you want it to look like a, a gradient scale. So you want 
no, you want it to look like it's going from dark to light with no stark edges. You want it nice and smooth, like shading. All right, dry on wet. Exactly what it sounds like. Wet brush, paint the water onto the paper. This time, take a different brush and you're gonna dry brush it. So I mix my brush in water, I'm gonna squeeze it out. I'm gonna mix it with just the pigment. So I'm getting a very dark pigment. And then I'm gonna paint over top. Okay, and so it's almost like a really weird combination of wet brush and dry brush. So remember, this is full dry brush. This is what wet brush on wet looks like. This is wet paper with dry brush on it. Okay, so just making sure my glue is done. So this is the very last one we're going to do. And then you guys are gonna have a minute to do it yourself. And like I said, I, while you're doing that, I'm gonna post this video. I have my rubber cement glue on there. Now this also works if you have a piece of tape. There's also stuff called masking fluid, which is specifically for this. Um, but I prefer rubber cement because I'm gonna show you in a second. So wet brush, just like normal. I'm gonna use a wash. I'm gonna paint over top of it. Oh, I need more water. Okay, that part where you see here, repelling the water, that is the rubber cement glue. Now, I need that to dry. Sorry, I'm just blowing on this to try and heighten its drying. Another way that you can dry these, by the way, if you're ever doing a watercolor and you need to move quick, is using a blow dryer, not on hot. You wanna use it on the cold setting so that it dries fairly uh, cool. You don't wanna like melt the paint. All right, let's see if that works. So this is still a little wet. I should probably wait for it to completely dry, but it should work. Okay, so with rubber cement glue, you can actually rub it and it comes off. Okay, so that's how masking works. Now this is, has a little bit of um, pink in it. That's because when I was doing the flicking, I got uh, paint all over my finger. So that's where that came from. But normally this would come off as completely white and it's a way of working if you wanna block out a certain area. So if I was doing a background and or fixing a background and I didn't want to get paint on a different area, I would use that rubber cement glue paint over top of it. And that way if I accidentally went over, I could just very easily peel it off by rubbing at it. So those are some of the very basic watercolor techniques that we're going to be using. Is there, are there any questions? I know I moved through this quickly. Um, I'm gonna post this obviously so that you can look through it because I'm just gonna move on to the other tutorial. But is there anything that anyone needs to know right now that would help them with this?